And so when you are confident, you will experience temporary defeat. When you are insecure and you lack confident, you will interpret temporary defeat as failure. Welcome to the Bedros Koolian Show. Hey friends, welcome to the Bedros Koolian Show. I'm Bedros Koolian and you are gonna love this show today because I wanna explore something that I've been getting a lot of questions about. First off, thank you all for sending me all your questions because when I can build an episode or a show around your questions, I know that if one of you have a question, probably hundreds or thousands of you want that answer. So I'm happy to serve you guys. Secondly, appreciate you guys for constantly uh, subscribing to the show, sharing the show on social media platforms and tagging me when you tag me. I always share it as well to give you guys a shout out. So thank you for that. Uh, Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, and all the platforms were blowing up. And I got some big news that I'm gonna be able to share with you guys, not just yet, but it is coming up, so sit tight. Um, and it's because of what we're doing here together as a community that's allowing us to reach even more people. So with that said, the episode today is really about, about why some people win in life and continue to progress forward and seem to launch and launch and launch, and then why some people seem to struggle in life and have these failures to launch. And you know, year after year are always restarting, they're always putzing along, they feel like they're always at, at step A again. And I wanna unpack that and I wanna solve that for you because I have a feeling there's a secret to being unstoppable. And the reason I know that there's a secret to being an unstoppable human is because, well, I've had the good fortune of living on both sides of the fence, right? Uh, I've been that guy that has lived in Section 8 housing. I've been average. I've been mediocre. I've, I've had the regular nine to fives. I've certainly put myself in a position where I focused more on pleasure and desire versus duty and purpose. And so this new part of my life, you know, the Bedros 2.0 over the last 20 years, right? I'm 48 years old now. So over the last 20 years, I've really focused on leveling up and, and become the highest level version of myself so I can serve my businesses better. I can serve my community better. I can take better care of my family. I can live an impact. I can, I can have, have legacy. And let me tell you, there is a formula to being an unstoppable human. And I've also had the good fortune that over the last 12 years, I've been able to coach and consult some of the top performing humans on the planet, New York Times bestselling authors, world-class entrepreneurs, uh, medical doctors who are like specialists at what they do, um, our military men and women from every special operations community, uh, Green Berets, Navy SEALs, uh, Delta guys. Uh, I've even had the good fortune to work with pro athletes and help them make that transition from being an athlete into entrepreneurship. And I started to see a common denominator into humans who are unstoppable. And believe it or not, there's nothing magical about them. There's nothing magical about me, but there are some things, traits, skills, habits, behaviors, uh, processes that you are going to need to adopt if you want to become an unstoppable human, right? So why is it important that you become unstoppable? Well, think about this. You probably want to live a life of fulfillment, right? Like you want fulfillment. We want significance. We want purpose because in the absence of purpose, fulfillment, significance, we kind of feel like every day is groundhog day. Every day is a day where ah, I'm not really moving forward. I don't have a sense of purpose. There's this like low, low undertone of anxiety and depression and overwhelm. And you just feel like you don't really matter. And that is not the best way to live as a human, man. I'm telling you that right now. Like we are put on this planet. You are put on this planet to do something big, to do something great, to impact lives, to be an agent of change. And if, and if you believe that, like I believe that, then you want to figure out what the formula is to being unstoppable, right? So let me tell you a little story here. Uh, and, and, and you might you might resonate with this story because, well, quite honestly, this is the thing that really holds people back in their quest of excellence. Like I believe the greatest work that any humans can do on this planet is our quest to become our highest level versions, right, of ourself. Like what does the 2.0 version of you look like? Well. If you want to look like that person, then you've got to eliminate this thing I'm gonna to talk to you about. So 
um, gosh, about a month ago, we ran the project, Prout Class 16. And when we were running Class 16 of the project, there's this evolution during the project that's called the pit. And the pit is, it, it seems like a simple evolution because you're really not running, you're not hiking, you're not carrying logs, you're not fighting the ocean uh, like you would when Instructor Ray, the Navy SEAL, puts you in the ocean during the project and you're fighting the waves and you're, and you're having to stay linked up and go through all these exercises while, while also fighting the mighty ocean, right? Like the pit is this giant dirt pit that you're, for the most part, asked to crawl on. But it hurts, it sucks, it's long, you don't know how far you're going to go. You don't know if Instructor Steve is going to make you restart the crawls in the pit. Now, for those of you that are new to the Bedros Cooling Show, you're like, what is he talking about? What is the project? The project is a 75-hour personal development program for men who want to level up in life as leaders, as entrepreneurs, and who want to basically unfuck themselves because of the traumas that they've had in life that are holding them back, creating limiting beliefs, and creating these, these glass ceilings that you might be butting up against, right? And so the project is really a brotherhood of men. For 75 hours, you go through this physical, mental, emotional uh, experience to really unpack everything, to dismantle yourself, and then to rebuild yourself into the better version of yourself. And then the project continues for the next 12 months upon graduation with this you know, coaching program that I have for these men that's where we get together three times a year and we work on money and meaning, right? Because think about it, as a, as, as a man, the, the greatest sense of purpose and significance comes from money and meaning. You wanna be able to make money to be able to provide for your family, take care of your family, give them shelter, give them protection, uh, buy them what they want, show them the experiences, and then meaning. You wanna be able to spend valuable time and you wanna be able to have great experiences and, and, and really be able to help out people in your community who need a helping hand and meaning is very valuable. And so this whole mastermind that dovetails with the project takes these men who graduate the project and really helps them level up and hockey stick in life and leadership and personal development. But as these guys were going through the project for class 16, during the pit, during the pit, there came a time where I approached one of them and I said, hey, I'm curious, why are you here? And uh, he gave me some answer, right? He gave me some answer. And to me, it didn't matter what the answer was. My next question was, is that a good enough reason for you to stay? Because if you don't know about the project, well, anytime during the 75 hours, you can quit. And if you quit, it's over for you, right? You get, you get to go to a nice hotel and you get to get warm and you get food and all those things. But if you're in the project dealing with the suck for 75 hours, whether we're doing journaling or we're doing physical evolutions or we're giving you a two hour cat nap or whatever, us, the, the instructors get to control the cadence of your experience. And so what I found is during the pit, when they're crawling, when I go up to men and I ask them, why are you here? And they give me a reason. And then I ask them, is that a good enough reason for you to stay? From the men who don't have a good enough reason why, when I ask them, why are you here? And is that a good enough reason for you to stay? They begin to have doubt. Like, whoa, maybe that's not why I should be here. Maybe, maybe I don't need to be suffering like this. Maybe I don't need to be experiencing this cold. Maybe I don't need to be getting yelled at. Maybe it's not worth it. Soon they begin to negotiate with themselves. Now, it probably sounds very cruel, right? Me going up to them in their, in their moment of suffering and going through trials and tribulations and then asking them, hey, why are you here? And they'll tell me like, oh, I'm here for my family. I'm here to make more money. I'm here to, to, to you know, get over my traumas and limiting beliefs. And I go, well, is that a good enough reason for you to stay? Is that gonna help you stay when things get worse during the project, when Instructor Steve, Instructor Ray really bring the heat? And all I do is I instill a little bit of doubt. And then for the men that have these weaker minds, they begin to let that doubt take root. And it begins to build this tree of negativity in their head. And they begin to negotiate their way out of the project. And I have the opportunity to stop them before they ring the bell and quit by asking them, hey, did I just put you in a position where you started to negotiate with your inner self 
and find your way out of the project? Are you right now about to make a permanent decision off temporary feelings of doubt that I instilled in you that then you began to grow and to give root to and, and breathe life into? And they go, yeah. I go, well, where else does this show up in your life? And they go, holy shit, you're right. You're right. And so doubt is one of the big limiting factors of a man's success, right? So let's dive into it. How does a man win at life over and over again when another man continues to struggle and just has these failures to launch? Well, it's simple. It's the athlete mindset versus the spectator mindset. See, the way I look at it is athletes really see themselves as unstoppable warriors, at least the top athletes, right? The top athletes, the top special operators that I've worked with, when they come from Navy SEALs or they come from Green Berets and or, or, or Marine Raiders and they want to become entrepreneurs, when they're making that transition from military to entrepreneurship, and then they hire me as a coach to, to help them, guide them, give them the blueprint to succeed in business, I see how their mindset works. They still operate like they are on the athletic field. They still operate like they are on the battlefield. They still operate as though it's life and death. And when you operate that way, you develop this unstoppable mindset. And that is the athlete or warrior mindset versus the spectator mindset. The spectator is uh, the guy who says, look, man, you know, I could just sit here. I can be an armchair quarterback. I'm going to drink my beer. I'm going to eat my Cheetos. I'm going to scratch my fat belly. And I'm just going to judge everybody on the field. The athlete, on the other hand, says, look, man, I got to take care of myself. I got to become unstoppable. I've got to I've got to eat right. I got to train right. I got to maintain a positive mental attitude. I got to do all these things because every day I get on the field and I go to battle. And so I want to break it down for you because how unstoppable people win is is formulaic. It's formulaic. The very first thing that unstoppable people do is they have this vision. So I'm gonna share this framework that you can use. And this framework really is a three step, three Vs. So it's easy enough for you to remember. Step one, you're gonna to have to have a clear vision, right? Your clear vision has to be, what is it that I want? What is it that I want out of life? So let's use, uh, oh, I don't know, let's create a fictional character named Bob. And Bob is going to, well, he's gonna be an entrepreneur. He's got a nine to five job right now, but he feels he's called to do something more. He wants to be an entrepreneur. He wants to change lives. He wants to be in charge of his own impact uh, and his own income. He knows that he's gonna to have to take a risk. He knows that he's gonna to have to put money and his neck on the line. There's a chance of possibly failing. He doesn't know how long it'll take to succeed. There's all those factors, right? When you decide to be an entrepreneur, when you decide to sign the front of the check and no longer the back of the check, you are taking an inherent risk. You are taking a large amount of risk. You're going up against competitors that already exist and who are already making money in your industry. You're about to try and take some of their business or some of their money. And so they are going to try and defend themselves by out marketing you, out positioning you and probably talking crap on you, right? That happens everywhere. It happens on the sports field, the battlefield. It happens in the business field. So we're going to use Bob as an example. He's going to, he wants to quit his nine to five. So Bob first has to have a vision. Like what is his vision? So maybe he might say, well, look, you know, I want to start a, oh, I don't know. I want to start this, this product. Maybe Bob's going to sell hats. Let's say Bob's going to start a hat business and his hats are unique because the graphics are very unique compared to anything else that's out there. Cool. Well, Bob also realizes that for him to sell these hats, He's got to have some money. So Bob has to realize that he might have to spend the next year to save up some money, to tighten the belt, to not go out and eat, to sell his expensive car and drive a cheaper car, to do everything he can to acquire money, put it away so that next year he can launch his business and hopefully it can become successful. So he needs a clear vision, but the vision has to go further than that. What does that business look like in the first 12 months, in the first 36 months, in the next five years, right? A one year, three year, five year vision. Like exactly what does it look like? How many employees does it have? How much money is it making? What kind of hats is he selling? Is it a licensed thing with the NFL and NBA and, and sports brands or, or with Marvel? Or is it unique? logos and graphics that's unique to him so he doesn't have to license that. The more specific you are on your vision, and by the way, this works for starting a business, this works for when you wanna get in a marriage, this same 
frame framework that I'm going to give you right now. The three V's works for when you want to get fit, when you want to get jacked, when you want to make money. It, it, it works in relationships. It works in every category of life. But we're using Bob right now who's going to quit his nine to five and he is going to now start a hat business in a year, right? He needs a very clear vision of what that business is going to look like in a year, in three years, in five years. And, 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 how much money it's going to make, how many, he has to visualize how many employees he's going to have. He has to visualize what kind of work he's going to be doing, what kind of a leader he's going to be. It has to be so clear in his mind's eye that he can close his eyes and then have a visual snapshot of his future business, right? So he got your vision. So step one is to develop your vision. Step two are the values. So if Bob is now going to go from being an entrepreneur to a CEO, what does a CEO that owns a successful hat business that makes a couple million a year look like? Like, what are his values? Well, that CEO is probably fit. That CEO is probably, probably has a great morning routine. That CEO probably eats right. That CEO probably has consistent sleep. That CEO is probably not married to crazy. He's got a, he's got an awesome partner and spouse at home who roots for him and encourages him, right? That CEO is also someone who is willing to network and connect. Great. So now we know the values. Like we know that that CEO protects his time. That's part of the value systems, right? Your values are your traits. They're the routines that you're going to have. They're the habits and the actions that you're going to take that are going to help back into your vision. Those are the values. And now that we know what the, how clear the vision is and you've got the values, the next step that Bob needs to do are the victories. What are the victories that he needs on a day-to-day -day basis so that he can start stacking wins? All victories are, are small daily wins stacked hour by hour, day by day, week by week, month by month that help you back into your values. So if we know, for example, that, well, you know, uh, Bob's got to have that strong morning routine that we talked about, right? That's part of his values, a strong morning routine. Well, the victories that he's going to do is one, maybe he's going to turn off the notification. Like that's a big victory. Turn off the notification on your phones. Number two, maybe he wakes up and the first thing he does is he exercises. Then he, he eats a healthy meal, another victory stacked, right? And then he, he takes his GSD list, his get shit done list that I've talked about in a previous episode. And he has already made that the night before. And he starts chipping away at that list, doing the work that moves the money and the meaning needle, right? Like he starts stacking little wins, answering those emails, making those phone calls, having those meetings, whatever it is that he needs to do to get himself closer to the man that he needs to become to achieve the vision that he sees in his mind's eye right? And that is what an athlete does. Well before the season starts, that athlete, the winners, the winners have already seen themselves with the trophy, have already seen themselves on the other side of the finish line in first place. They don't just go, well, I hope this works. They have such a clear vision that they can feel it, taste it, breathe it, smell it. And then they live a ruthlessly designed life. They have these core values that are non-negotiable for them. Because if you're a winner, you cannot have negotiable values. It must be non-negotiable, zero compromise. And if you are living a zero compromise life, now you have to stack the victories that back into those values. And it might seem crazy to some people. Like some of the victories might be like, hey man, I don't go to weddings and funerals. I don't go to weddings and funerals. I don't do birthday parties. One of my victories is I work on weekends, right? Bob might say for the next two years, I'm gonna work on weekends. Like that's a victory. It backs into the values, which backs into the vision. You get it, right? And so understand that unstoppable humans treat themselves like athletes. And so if that's the case, what else do they do? Well, they also optimize themselves to be even more unstoppable, right? So what does optimization mean? Well, we wanna, we wanna have our mind, body, our routines, our team, our environment, everything dialed in to a 10 to his highest peak performance, right? And so think about optimizing your mind for a moment, right? 
Are you listening to negative news? Are you watching CNN and Fox and hand wringing about what the next big threat is in the world or worried about the economy? That's not optimizing your mind. Or are you reading books? Are you watching podcasts? Are you listening to audiobooks that are helping you develop in sales and marketing, in persuasion, in networking? If you're doing the things that are keeping your mind sharp, right? And think of all the ways you can keep your mind sharp. And it's not just tasks and traits. You can keep your mind sharp by way of, by way of association. Who are the people that you allow around you? Because if, if you're allowing negative people into your environment, are you really keeping your mind optimized or are you allowing them to degenerate your mind by poisoning your mind with thoughts? Remember, I talked to you about what I do with the project, right? I instill a little bit of doubt in those guys who are crawling through the pit. And as, as they're crawling through the pit and I give them a little doubt, I see how quickly they get up to go and ring the bell. And when they get up to go ring the bell, I have the opportunity to stop them and let them know that all I did was instill a little bit of doubt in the reason why they're there at the project. And then they quickly got up and went to uh, ring the bell because they started to negotiate with themselves. They started to listen to the inner critic instead of the advocate. And so I offer them a second chance to go back into the pit, to go back into the evolution, to go back to work versus ring the bell, quit, and then realize later the next morning that you just made a permanent decision while having temporary feelings of doubt, right? And so the people that you surround yourself with can absolutely influence your mind, your thought process, how you think, how you, how you process, whether you think abundantly or you are thinking uh, like, like a scaredy cat that you think the sky's gonna fall, the economy's gonna, gonna collapse, and when it does, that you're destined to fail because everyone around you is talking like that. You have heard the saying, right, that you are the byproduct of the five people that you surround yourself with. Well, if I surround myself with, with, with negative people, low tone people, low energy people, gossipy people, people who spread rumors, people who always find something wrong with things, aren't I gonna become the sixth person, I am, right? So you gotta optimize your mind and protect your mind. Secondly, your body. Like, how do you protect your body? Like for me, I don't check my notifications. I, again, the people that I surround myself with, my morning routine, I am ruthless, I am vigilant in my mind. I am just as ruthless and vigilant in my body. I eat high protein, I eat high, high vegetables and, and fiber. The, the fats that I get are from avocado, or the fats that I get are from fish oils, right? Because again, I treat myself like an athlete because at this level of entrepreneurship, if you're just gonna be a small business owner running a little donut shop, a little, a little tiny you know, store somewhere where it's just you, know, you and one employee, hey, listen, maybe you don't need to do any of this stuff. Maybe you could just be someone putzing along and saying, hey, look, I'm my own boss, I'm self-employed, I'm making the same amount of money that I would make if I had a job, but at least I don't have a boss, right? Hey, I make $60,000 a year after it's all settled, $50,000, $60,000 a year, I have a small business, I'm my own boss, so take that. And that's cool, man. Then this podcast probably isn't for you. But if you are a high achiever, at least you have this desire, you feel the calling in your gut to be a high achiever, a peak performer in life, then you've gotta optimize like an athlete would. And so how do you optimize your body? You work out consistently every day. You eat clean, you eat foods that are gonna keep you sharp. Like I told you guys that I've never been a big drinker, right? But this past November of 2022, I cut out even recreational drinking, meaning social drinking. Like I would have a cocktail or two once a month, maybe once every other month. I even cut that out because I didn't wanna wake up you know, once a month or once every other month feeling a little foggy headed in the mornings because I realized that took me away from my purpose, from my calling in life. And, and by the way, a little, I'm gonna do a little shameless plug here. You know, you always see me here on the show with this truly shaker cup, right? And people always ask me, if you check the comments, check the DMs, it's always, hey, what's in it? It's water with two specific things, Trulian products. And Trulian is one of my companies. It's a supplement company. It's a zero uh, uh, compromise supplement company. And it's water and I mix it with, I have two of these every single morning. And it's the, the wellness shot right here. And it's the organic powdered greens, right? I put it in here. 
twice a day, once in the morning, and then once around two or three o'clock in the afternoon, right now, right? We just, we happen to be filming right now, so I bring it on set with me, but otherwise, I'll have it upstairs in my office, and it keeps my immune system strong. It gives me the micronutrients that I need. And that wellness shot that I was telling you about, this orange one, like this thing right here, 1,000 milligrams of vitamin C, gives you the vitamin D, turmeric, ginger, cayenne pepper, zinc, like everything you need to have an optimized immune system because I know for me, if I get sick frequently, it's gonna slow down my progression as an entrepreneur. And what these two things do for me, yes, it's a shameless plug, but it's also a fact. Like I take this stuff and all high performers supplement with quality shit that is good for their body and mind, right? I am optimized at the highest level. And so now look, you can't like not get sleep, eat shitty, and then think like you're gonna take a couple of supplements and, and all of a sudden be optimized. Supplements are just that, they supplement a good lifestyle. But if you guys, by the way, wanna try the Trulene powdered greens and the Trulene wellness shot that I told you about, you can, and uh, got an exclusive deal for you. You can also get the black shaker cup here. If you go to Trulene.com, use the code my name, Bedros, you'll get 50% off your subscription of the wellness shot or the greens or whatever it is, the combination of which that you wanna order, right? So you just go to truling.com and you use my code Bedros um, and then people will know that you are a listener of the Bedros Cooling Show and uh, you will get a 50% discount off your first order and subscription. So there you go. But going back to this, if you're not optimizing yourself, if you're not getting, going out there and getting sunlight for your body, if you're not eating healthy, organic, high proteins, grass fed, getting your exercise, like how do you suppose you're gonna build a million dollar company, a $2 million company, a five, 10, a hundred million dollar company, right? And oftentimes I'll hear from people, well, listen, when I get, when, once I have a million dollars or $5 million, then I'll start building this routine. Dude, you gotta have, you gotta be that CEO before you have the money, do you understand that? If you think that you are going to first make the money and then become that CEO, it doesn't work that way. You must first create the habits, the routines, the lifestyle to optimize your mind, your body, your routine, have a great team, your environment, so that you can make the million, two million, 10 million, 50 million, right? That's how it works. And so I share this with you guys because if you are not optimizing yourself, if you're not seeing yourself as an athlete, if you're just seeing yourself as a spectator, right? then what you do is you end up abusing your body. What you do is you end up eating hamburgers, you end up going to Starbucks and getting super caffeinated, having a whole bunch of sugar, you, you, you're probably spiking your insulin, and now you're having this low energy and feel like you need to fall asleep at two in the afternoon, and you can't figure out what's going on, so you take more stimulants, and now you can't sleep at night, and you're feeling anxiety and depression, and you're like, I don't understand why I'm anxious and depressed and I can't sleep at night. Well, because you probably didn't work out in the morning, you probably didn't eat right throughout the day, you had too much sugar, too much stimulants, too much bread, too much gluten, too much, too much of all the shit that's poisoning you, if you really want to know the truth, right? Because that's what the big food conglomerates do today. They find the cheapest ingredients, the most overly processed stuff to sell you that you will eat because it tastes good, and then it begins to dull your senses. It begins to take away your focus. It begins to slow you down. That is not an optimized human. And so understand that the highest performers on the planet, doesn't matter if they're on the battlefield, the business field, or the athletic field, they are optimized in mind, body, routine, their team, their environment. So let's talk about your environment. What are you doing right now to make sure that you have an environment that is conducive to getting the most amount of work done towards your biggest goals and dreams in life? Right, because if your environment is chaotic, it's unpredictable, you got loud people, you got smelly people, you got people that aren't necessarily rooting for you, you better find a way, you better find a way to leave. Like when I had roommates who all they wanted to do was party back in the day when I was single, and I knew that I was mission focused, I would take my big giant Toshiba laptop and I would go to a, a, a shitty little cafe somewhere that's like, I can have peace and quiet, and I'd get as much work done as possible in, in that environment. 
If I couldn't build the environment, I would go find the environment that I could get the most amount of productive and efficient work done. Because I knew that every day counts. Every hour counts. And so it is massively important for you to understand, to optimize yourself like a human. You know, in my book, Man Up, I talk about the, the, the fighter jet and the crop duster, right? And the fighter jet is someone who is high speed. They set high standards for themselves. They are disciplined. They are focused. They, they make a promise and they keep a promise to themselves. They're constantly GSD and getting shit done. And then I talk about the crop duster. The crop duster hits the snooze button. They always put things off. They procrastinate. They're the over planners, but not the executors. The, the, the crop duster is the one who surrounds themselves with negative people, feeds themselves with poisonous food, and then wonder why they are not feeling healthy and happy, and instead feeling anxious, overwhelmed, depressed, suffering in silence. And so I'm here to tell you, if you are that person, you can do something about it by immediately taking control. Like, how do I end every show? What do I tell you? I say, average is the enemy. Being average is the enemy, don't I? Success is your responsibility. And change can take place in an instant when you decide to flip the switch, don't I say that? And if you wanna flip the switch, it is a, it must be a very forefront thought that, that is so powerful that nothing else can outweigh it. Like it has to be that intentional that what I'm doing right now, I'm flipping the switch so I cannot deal with this negative person. I cannot be in this negative environment. I cannot eat this poisonous food. I cannot stay up and watch this shitty TV show and sacrifice my sleep. Like those that flip the switch and achieve success and break out of average and mediocrity, those winners, have a non-negotiable, non-compromising life. And they know how to say no to a lot of things so they can say yes to that big dream in life. And so that kind of reminds me of something that Denzel Washington said. I saw this, this viral reel that was um, going around by Denzel Washington. He says, without commitment, you will never start. And without consistency, you will never finish. Now, I believe that to be true, but I'm gonna add one more thing to it. Without confidence, you will never pick yourself back up. Because in your quest to be the best athlete, to be the best husband, to be the best entrepreneur, to be the best father, to be the best warfighter, whatever it is that you want to excel at, that you want to have supremacy in, you will have moments of temporary defeat. But if you don't have confidence, you will accept that as failure. If you are a confident person, then you will see that as temporary defeat. And the difference, I know it's a reframe, but the difference between failure, quitting, giving up, and moving on versus temporary defeat, knowing that it's temporary, that it is part of the process, it is almost formulaic that I must have some defeats in order to prove my worth to the universe that I deserve this greater level of success, happiness, abundance, relationship, fit body, whatever it is that you're looking for. You get that, right? I hope you understand that. And so how do you build confidence then? Well, let's talk about that because I wanna end on that note. How do you build confidence? Because if you can get rid of that first thing that I told you about, which is if you can get rid of the doubt that lingers in your head, right? Because doubt will start taking roots doubt will begin to create this tree of uncertainty within you and you will begin to listen to that critic who begins to negotiate your dreams and hopes away. So if you can eliminate doubt and if you can build confidence, I believe that you are like 50% there in terms of achieving your life's goals. So what is the secret to confidence? Well, first, when you make a promise, keep a promise, right? I'm not talking about just making a promise to people around you and then keeping that promise. I'm talking about making a promise to yourself. If you say you're gonna, if you set your alarm to wake up tomorrow morning at 5 a.m. or 6 a.m., if you hit that snooze button, you broke a promise. You literally told your subconscious mind that you'll take 15, 20 minutes of interrupted sleep instead of getting up and dominating your goals, dominating your dreams, right? And so really what you did is you took an L first thing in the morning. You need to keep those promises and stack the W's. You get that, right? 
So if you say, I'm going to go work out at this time, keep that promise. I'm going to eat this kind of food, keep that promise. I'm going to eliminate social media, keep that promise. I'm going to eliminate these negative people, keep that promise. I'm going to create a GSD list every day, keep that promise. And when you start making promises, small, tiny promises that seem insignificant right now, but over time stack up and build massive confidence, that's what you're doing. Because your confidence is really your reputation with yourself. And if you keep breaking promises to yourself, what you're really doing is you are eroding your trust with self, right? We've talked about this before on the show. There's the human animal, and then there's the human being who's connected to conscience, right? And if you're connected to source, if you're tapped in, and you're connected to consciousness, then guess what? Consciousness knows what the higher self wants. Like, you know that, and your conscience knows that. And if you go against that, you start feeling anxious, depressed, sad, you begin to self-sabotage because, well, you started stacking L's, man, instead of W's. So confidence is a byproduct of keeping promises to yourself. It's a byproduct of stacking wins. It's a byproduct of doing hard things, like choosing to do a hard thing. You know, I always talk about that marathon challenge that I did, right? Trained for six weeks and ran a marathon. But I also trained for six weeks with an MMA fighter, a pro MMA fighter, and I did not ever know anything about MMA. And to go all six weeks with him, and then to go six weeks with, in jujitsu, six weeks of rock climbing, six weeks of surfing, to take something hard that you're not good at and to go all in on it with a coach, with an instructor, or just, just to get a plan or a program and execute. Do you know how much confidence that builds when you get to week six and then you either get in the ring and fight or you get on the mats and roll uh, you know, in, in terms of a competition or you, or you cross that finish line on that marathon? Do you know how much confidence you have built in that time? And that confidence from that marathon or that jujitsu or, or the MMA, it bleeds into every other area of your life. That's what's powerful about this. And so when you are confident, you will experience temporary defeat. When you are insecure and you lack confident, you will interpret temporary defeat as failure and you will give up. And that is how people become average. That is how people stay average. And that is how years will go by and you'll see that person, you go, man, they had so much potential, but for some reason failed to launch in life. And then it's because they accepted doubt and they eroded confidence, right? And so what do I want you to do? Like if you guys wanna try something hard, I think there's a link in the description box in the YouTube. So if you guys are not on YouTube, just go to bedrosecoolian.com forward slash challenge and you can do my 26.2 challenge. I've got it for you, it's absolutely free, it costs you nothing. You're just going to get that. You're gonna sign up for a marathon or you're gonna measure out a marathon in your town, right? By driving 13.1 miles and then back again, or is it 13.2, no, it's 13.2. It's 13.1 it's or 13.2 for a marathon, guys? It's 26.2, so 13.1, yeah. got it. 13.1, thank God I've got a team back here who knows the answers to everything. But are you gonna drive 13.1 miles and then drive 13.1 miles back? There's your fucking marathon, baby. I'm giving you the training program, I'm giving you the nutrition program, and I'm giving you the mindset program all for free because I want you to do something hard. I want you to step out of your comfort zone. I want you to challenge yourself. And I'm giving it to you for free, bedroscoolian.com forward slash challenge, and you got no excuse not to do it. Yeah, but it's cold, but it's hot, I got flat feet, who cares? Do something hard gain the confidence, let it bleed into other areas of your life and make money, get more jacked, have better relationships, be a better human and watch how awesome life is, right? And so if there's one more thing that I could leave you with on this show, if there's one more thing I can leave you with on this show, it is that you have got to start changing the story that you tell yourself. Because if you wanna become an unstoppable human, if you wanna be a high performer, you want peak performance just oozing out of you, I need you to understand this one thing, that the story that you tell yourself of what happened to you, the sad story where you were the victim, you were broke, you were a foreigner, you lived in Section 8 housing, you, like if you start buying that story, see that's part of my history, but I don't lean on that as because of that, therefore I'm a victim. In fact, I always say I'm blessed 
that I was an immigrant to this country. I'm blessed I lived in Section 8 housing. I'm blessed that I ate out of dumpsters. I'm blessed that when I got lice as a kid, my parents couldn't afford lice treatment, so my dad had to siphon out gasoline, and my parents washed my hair with gasoline to, to, to kill the lice. See, I'm, I'm blessed for that. I've, I've completely flipped a script on that because I know that if I didn't deal with those hardships, I wouldn't become the hard man that I've become. And so if you haven't put yourself through hardship, do it. If you have experienced hardship in your life, don't see yourself as a victim. Understand that deep down inside you, there's a hard human in there. If you are willing to reframe your story of being the victor and not the victim. And if you're willing to do all that, then you, my friend, will become one unstoppable human. Guys, thank you so much for watching and listening to this episode of the Bedros Koulian Show. As always, again, appreciate the subscribes on YouTube. Uh, just keep them coming, keep sharing this, keep leaving us reviews. We are impacting the lives of men worldwide. And it's happening because of us, not me, because of us. All I'm doing is sharing my life experiences with you because I want to impact one person on the other side of this microphone. But each one of you on the other side of this microphone, I believe, as part of the tribe, have a duty and a responsibility to share this podcast, share this YouTube show, be a role model, an example, so people can go, dude, what's changed in your life? I want more of what you're doing. And then you can tell them the life you live, the standards that you've set, the non-negotiables that you have. You know, that's one of the best ways. If you want to change the world, it ain't going to start by changing politics. It's going to, we're going to start by changing one individual at a time and by being a role model, by sharing this content. So thank you so much for sharing, for subscribing, for liking, and all that stuff that y'all get asked to do by all these social media cats, and I'm one of them now. But I hope I'm giving you enough value to justify that subscription, to justify that review, to justify that share. I love you guys to pieces and always remember this, that average is the enemy, success is your responsibility, and change can take place in an instant when you decide to flip the switch.